You look like a nerd. <laughs> nerd. <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> Welcome to the latest Watercolors Aquarium Gallery video brought to you from the Aquarium Rush Studios in downtown Grand Rapids, Michigan. This is a species profile edition of a really, really unique fish. This is the only fish that's gotten us all geeked up in a long time. <laughs> I'm going to use the word weird. Yeah. It's. I, I definitely consider it the weirdest fish we have in the store. Yeah, people yeah. love to talk about ghost knives and eels being oddballs. This is a truly bizarre species. Right, right. Not necessarily in the way that it looks, but just in where it's from. Its scientific name is Alcalapia alkalica, oh. right? Basically <laughs> meaning an alkaline tilapia from alkaline water. Yeah. Right? And yeah. did we mention they're from alkaline water? <laughs> right, right. It's technically classed as hypersaline, actually. <laughs> because wow. it's there's so much stuff in it. <clears throat> These make Malawi and Tangy consiclids look like they come from our own water. <laughs> yeah, like... Uh, Cold our water. They're, uh, in the scientific literature, the TDS, like, habitat range is listed as somewhere between 200 and 650. <laughs> 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 and I'm like, what? <laughs> TDS in Lake Malawi is listed around 250. Yeah, right. Um, this is the soda cichlid. They are a maternal mouth brooder from a very unique ecosystem in Tanzania. Uh, like they're endemic to Lake Natron in Tanzania. So right. tell us a little bit about Lake Natron because that's what this is all about. Uh, apparently it's this alkali lake that exists because there's a bunch of calcium carbonate hot springs just bubbling forth into the <laughs> springing yeah into the lake it's like i don't know how to describe it it's just because my exact you heard me I, we should have been filming earlier but i was sitting there reading up more stuff just because i was like oh i want to make sure i brushed up and i'm like this is crap this is not how, how do these things live this is not how biology works this is stupid screw you guys how dare you live there <laughs> yeah, like... so the water temperatures can be somewhere between 85 and 105 yeah we split the difference and we were keeping them at 90 right yeah. now <laughs> and they're looking at us like hey give me some food we got these fish in and i thought all right let's make sure we take extra special care of these and charles make sure you text me when they eat i just want to know they're eating right yeah. And I think it was like before I got home. Yeah. Um, they devoured everything. These fish just want to live. Mm -hmm. And they're good at it. And they're <laughs> always up and about looking at you. They have no fear. I highly doubt they have very many natural predators. <laughs> if they could survive there, they wouldn't melt. <laughs> yeah, no birds even putting their beak in that water. <laughs> Dude, but seriously, like. I don't even know how to just begin with this fish. It's so ludicrous. It, it's a pH range of 8.5 to 10. 10. 10. And like that means that there's a point in its biology where it can no longer excrete ammonia. It has to excrete urea. I have never heard of that in a teleos fish. That blows my mind. What exactly does that mean? Right, break the science down a little bit for us. Yeah, so uh, I, I would like to think that the majority of our viewers will know what the nitrogen cycle is, but let's do a quick overview. Fish excrete ammonia. Right. There are bacteria that turn that into nitrite. There are bacteria that turn that into nitrate. You do water changes. You remove the nitrate. All right, well then, what do you do when the first step is no longer ammonia? <laughs> I don't know anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got nothing. I, I, we do know that when we test the water, it tests fine. Yeah. So it's working. Yeah. So we've got them in a 20 long yep. with a sponge filter and some uh, basically dry rock stuff to just shoot the pH up. A little bit of extra calcium carbonate. Yeah. We're and keeping that about 95 degrees? 90. 90. 91 actually as of this last okay. night when I left. <laughs> so in the wild, if they're the only thing that can live there, what do they eat? Everyone's going to be shocked when I say this. You ready? Blue green algae, also known as spirulina. Right. <laughs> also known as cyanobacteria. Yeah. yeah. 
And like I read that and I was like, of course, because what else can survive in a habitat that ludicrous? <laughs> other than some other type of fringe organism. Yeah. <laughs> and so as such, we skew them towards a diet that has um, that's pellets with a high spirulina content. Um, and they took to it right away. So I don't anticipate any problems getting them to feed. Mm -hmm. uh, I try to, once a week, give them some gut-loaded uh, brine shrimp uh, that have spirulina inside them. Mm -hmm. uh, just because the literature seems to indicate that, you know, any bug that falls in dies. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, there is evidence that they do find those occasional bugs and just eat them. That would make sense. And so I'm like, all right, well, here's your bug for the week. <laughs> <laughs> and now breeding. They're maternal mouth breeders. Yeah, this is the part that's really crazy to me. They apparently like to dig. The males will, what's the word, excavate. Excavate these like little spawning pits. And the idea is, I guess it's a, like a dance floor. And the females will migrate wherever they feel, and if they find a male they like, they'll spawn, and she'll carry the eggs, and she'll be on her way. How long does she carry the male? That I don't know. Alright, we're working on that one. Hopefully <laughs> there are going to be a pair of these put into the breeding room. Yeah. yeah, and the part of, to me, like, the dynamic there that's kind of funny is, like, like, I see a situation where a female would, like, spawn with one male and decide that the other one's a better father, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. that, that puts so much, like, She's, control on that female to make those decisions. She's which, just casually she, shoving eggs under a rug. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't don't worry about that. <laughs> maybe not. Maybe not those ones. I just that's so funny to me and such a dynamic. I'm really looking forward to watching how that plays out. Right. Yeah. The males really do have some beautiful color. I would put them sort of in the Egyptian mouth brooder kind of look and behavior, yeah. only a little feistier. Yeah, they do have that like chunkier West African dwarf cichlid look to that. Yeah, yeah. that's probably the way to describe it. Kind of a yellowish with bluish on the fins. Yeah. Really beautiful little fish. The, the females are a little more boring, which, you know, they have the power, they're yeah. just not as pretty. And they don't get very big. From what I can figure out, they max out at like two, two and a half inches. Classic West Perfect. African dwarf. Yeah. yeah. Such a great fish for just a little hobby tank in your fish room. Yeah, yeah. Also, I just want to, just because this made me laugh, so if you go to the Seriously Fish page and you go to notes, literally the first sentence is, this cichlid is a true wonder of nature, and I don't know why that pleases me so much, <laughs> but it does, and I just wanted to share that. And if you don't know what SeriouslyFish.com is, like, you, you need it in your life because it's amazing. Yes. I love when you can feel the love from whoever wrote that article. Yeah. <laughs> you know that they love that fish. Yeah, very cool, very cool. Well, there we go. You should come down and take a look at this fish. We do have them down at the gallery. We are going to put some in the breeder lab to see if we can get a little bit more experience with breeding these fish. Um, but we do have some available. Yeah, just let us know. Yeah. Make sure to check out the Watercolors Aquarium Gallery podcast um, wherever you choose to listen. Check us out on Facebook. Check us out on Instagram. And we did just start up a TikTok, so we'll see how that goes. Tickety talk for all these crazy kids. Yeah. Hi, Splash. Oh, Splash decided to join us, too. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Let's have lots of fun and keep those hands wet. She said, I was barking and barking and, and no, no one, one came, came to keep me. Yeah.